Based on a survey of three independent news agencies, most people come to Netbox for IP addressing. Is that why you're here? So let's start off by saying, finally, IP address management, the IP addressing that you've been waiting for, or many of you may have just jumped straight to this section because you know there's two ways to get started with Netbox. One is by going after the physical devices, which is all the previous videos in this series. And the other is to dive straight into the IP addressing, set that up and start using it to track your IPs, then come back and assign the devices as you create them and so on and so forth. So what I'm here to talk about, and actually let's, let's come back to the, uh, to the screen. I'm here to talk about the big picture of IP addressing. This is where we've been in Netbox so far. We've gone through, created our sites, our racks, our device types, our devices. We've racked them, mounted them in the rack virtually and so on. And now we're taking a big step over here to IP address management. I want to give you the overview of what these pieces are. First off, VRF, Virtual Routing Forwarding Instance, is used typically in a data center environment when you're maintaining routing tables for customers or your organization has grown large enough that you have kind of sub-customers within your organizations or sub-entities inside of there. It allows you to say, okay, over here I have a certain set of routes that are going through my whole system and those are isolated from these routes over here. In a way, it's almost like having... Uh, uh, separate infrastructures kind of overlaid on top of each other. Think of it kind of like VLANs if you've never heard of it before. That's what VRFs are for. So you can create them and track them in here so that you can then assign your different, and here's all the entities, uh, IP addressing entities to them. You do not have to use VRF. It's, it's an option. A lot, a lot of people don't. But if you do, this is a great place to log it, right? So right below that, you have the top level allocations. This is aggregates. This is as big as it gets. As a matter of fact, let me take you right here to this slide. This is the big picture of Netbox IP addressing. Up top will be the aggregate. And this is as big as you can get. And, and don't, don't hold back when it gets here. I know you might be like, well, you've got the 10 network, right? If you're using private IP addressing. So, well, I don't really use all the 10 addresses. Oh, nope. 10 is your aggregate. Aggregate. Say that slowly, right? 10 is your aggregate, 10, 0, 0, 0, slash 8, the biggest subnet that you can get because you can only go down from there. That's where these sub entities come in. Once you create the aggregate, then you can drop down to the prefixes. Now, this is where you want to get more specific. Notice that you can have parent and child prefixes, so prefixes within prefixes, and you can keep nesting them as you, as you go down, right? So you could have, for instance, an aggregate of 10, 0, 0, 0, forward slash eight, as big as you can get, class A address, right? Then inside of there, you could say, well, our data center might use the, you know, 10, 0, 0, 0, forward slash 12. What would that be? That'd be one, two, three, four, you know, 16 increment, right? So that'd be 10, 0, 0, 0 through 10 dot, uh, uh, 15 dot 255 dot 255 would be your first major prefix inside of there, right? But that's, again, you typically wouldn't have a prefix that big, but that could be apparent, right? Then underneath there, you might say, okay, well, then we, we go into our data center and our first one is, you know, 10 dot, uh, let's just say 0 0.1.0 slash 24, which could be child prefixes. You could even keep going underneath that, right? That's, that's all of the, the, that's kind of the hierarchy, the bigger picture of how IP addresses are managed. Then you have what I call the great divide. It's this thing right here that bridges the world from the physical devices, which we created in the first half of the series, into the logical IP addressing, right? So biggest thing I want you to connect as I'm talking right now in this video is IP addresses are assigned to interfaces. Because I know, I know what's gonna happen is we're gonna be talking, I'm gonna be like, look at this, and look at that, and you're gonna be like, ah! Oh! And you're gonna start going in and configuring it, and then you're gonna be like, I, I, I can't assign it to my device, huh? because you don't assign IP addresses to devices, you assign them to interfaces, right? It's the interface and a device could have many different interfaces with many different IP addresses assigned to them. Now you can choose one IP address to be the primary, but I'm already getting ahead of yourself, uh, yourself or myself, one of the two. Um, so that being said, let me, let me jump back to Netbox itself so that you can see this. Only one other entity that I didn't address 
uh, in, my, in my slide, and that is VLANs. And that's because, again, you don't have to create VLANs. VLANs work very similar to VRF. It's nice. It's great to be able to track it. You can tie VLANs to a site, like many people have many different sites, where you've got you know, the same or different sets of VLANs assigned to each one of those sites. But again, VLANs can help you tie the pieces together so you've got that one documentation, uh, documentation system to rule them all. That's the big picture of IP addressing. It's that simple.